So this week, uh, we will talk about the hypothesis testing and also the multi-regression. Um, so the hypothesis testing is, is kind of we are going to review what um, we have learned from the statistics. Uh, so I believe you all have learned this one from the statistics. Um, this is an important concept and that can help us to understand the results uh, from the multi-regression models. Um, okay, uh, so the first uh, probability distribution. So uh, the first concept let's review is called random variable. So the random variable is a variable that uh, the value is associated with a probability uh, distribution. And to visualize those probabilities, so we can use two types of the visualization. So the first is called the PDF, uh, so the probability density uh, function. And the, the second one is a curve, so uh, cumulative distribution function, or CDF. OK, uh, so let's just see uh, an example. So uh, for the PDF, so um, Normally, the, the curve is like this. And so if you want going to see okay, the, prob the probability of the, um, of the var variable, so that um, seeing a variable within specific range, so that is area. So for example, if you want to see for this function, for this PDF function, if you want to see that a value that is between x1 and x2, so that the p-value or the probability of seeing that value within this range are those areas. Okay, so that is probability of seeing that value. And if we look at the CDF, so normally this is a curve, and um, the value stands for that. So for example, this is that the probability of seeing value that is uh, less or equal uh, to this value and this value shows that the, the probability of seeing a value following this function that less or equal to x2. So if you want to see calculate the p-value of the prob probability of seeing a value that is between x1 and x2, you need to use this p-value minus this p-value. Okay, so the difference Will be the uh, will be that the probability that was we we're seeing a value following this function within within that range. Okay. Um. So next, let's talk about the normal distribution. So normal distribution probably is a is a, uh, is the most common one that we having uh, we have we are talking about a lot. So the uh, the most famous feature is that it is a bell curve shaped. Uh, so if you look at the PDF, it's it's like this. Okay, so it's a normal distribution, normal distribution, and it is determined by the two um, uh, parameters. So the the mean value and also the standard deviations. So mean is sometimes we call it mu. And of standard deviation, we call it sigma. So the mean value is decided by like uh, where the the curve is centered. So uh, that is determined by the mean value. Okay. So the mu. Um, the standard deviation tell you that how wide uh, so the, um, the the data is look like. So that is the wide of the curve. So that is determined by the sigma. So for normal distribution, so uh, if you want to calculate the probability, so that is following this uh, formula where uh, we have the sigma and also we have the mu. And if you want to calculate the CDF, so that is the formula. OK, uh, so let's see one example. Um, so here we see we have the uh, PDF of house prices for three types of houses. So the single family home, 
the townhouse and the condo. So if you remember that this is from our uh, visualization lab. So you can see here, so the single family home has the highest average house price because you can see if you look at the mean values, uh, this is a single family home and this is for the condom and also townhouse. Okay. Um, and also if you look at the the standard deviation. So you can see that for the single family home, the the price range is much much wider. So uh, you, uh, you actually should look at this one. And also for the um, condo and also townhouse, you can see the, the range is, uh, is smaller. Okay, so that is uh, determined by the sigma. Okay, uh, so let's see if we we assume that single family home the price following uh, um, a normal distribution. So what is the probability that we see a house that is uh, expensive more than 500,000? Okay, so what is the probability that you see a single family home that the price is above this range? So the answer is that you find out that one and also the area we are sure that the probability that you see a house that is above that range, so that you can see it's it's a less than half of the the entire PDF. And if if now I ask that, okay, so what is the probability that you see a townhouse, the green one here, that is above this range? So that is again, so that will be the the tiny part. So it's it's it will be very very rare. Okay, the tiny part. Okay. Because the major part is is in this it's in this range, okay. So that's the major part where the townhouse price is located, okay. And also now, if ask, okay, so what's the price that you see? Okay, it's so a zero. So definitely those are some errors. So we should not have zeros, less than zeros, okay. Uh, so that is a PDF and and also uh, a CDF. Okay, so central limit theorem. Uh, so this is very useful and also uh, we have talked about a lot in statistics. Um, basically it means that so uh, if we have a population that is very very huge, uh, say that if we want to survey that um, the income of each single people uh, in United States, so you mean that that's almost impossible because you cannot ask each single people. So what we can do is that, so for example, that's entire population of the United States. And we can randomly pick uh, several persons and we can ask uh, their income. So that will called sample. So we can do that multiple times. And as long as that we are choosing those um, people randomly, so the sample one, sample two, and also sample three, and also those are independently sample three. So, for example, when we choose sample two, and we don't know the people of sample one out of sample three, so the selection of those persons are totally random and also independent. Okay, so that is what we call it IRD. Okay, in that case, let's say that we are talking about still average income, and the average. Okay, the average of those each samples. So the, uh, so for example, the mean, or the mu, of sample one, the mu of sample two, and also the mu of sample three, one, two, and also three. And also, if you have a lot of samples, the average of those samples will be normally distributed. So the average of those samples will be normally distributed, no matter how the population is distributed. So even if the, the population is not normally distributed, as long as the samples are independent and also identically distributed, their average values will be normally distributed. So that is what the CLT means. And to be more specific, so um, the the new normally uh, the the distribution of all the means, 
the, the average will still be the average of the population. Okay, so for example, in the population, the average income is 7K. And the sample one, sample two, and also in sample three, okay, their mean values follow. We we'll have an we we'll, we we'll have set of those new values of the mean values, and the mean value of the average of those mean values will still be seven k. So it's still close to seven k. And for the normal distribution, the stand, standard deviation will be the sigma or the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. Okay. And why that is very, very important? Because that gives us a way that, so even no matter how the population are distributed, so we can always just get a sample of those distribution. And as long as we can get enough samples and those mean values of those samples will be normally distributed. So the mean values of those samples will be normally, distribu normally distributed. And we can also apply those methods that work on the normal distributions 